that being said, quickly went to mention about my podcast. I love the best. How long gone? I'm getting a little bit, a little bit annoyed about like the. It's not even payola. Some has not even annoyed. I don't know what the annoying comes from, and and I wouldn't say it's projection because of what I'm doing, and I want to be as successful as them or whatnot. I don't think so because I'm uh, I'm able to do what I'm doing and also enjoy stuff without kind of viewing it from like oh that should be me. That's a really you know lame and r worded way to look at things, but. I love How Long Gone, the podcast. I love it. One of my favorite ones. Go-to ones I listen to on a weekly basis. It comes out three times a week. It's produced really well. They have interesting guests and stuff, and it's amazing. But it's also very much a niche podcast. It's also operates a very particular type of niche where you kind of have to be into certain things to kind of get them and to kind of find out who they are and to be into the lingo and to understand the topics they're talking about, menswear, fashion, culture, music, restaurants, hospitality, bars, all that sort of stuff. It's really nuanced. So when you see all these press pieces about them online, it gets a little bit annoying and nauseating and it kind of feels like payola. And I know a lot of it comes from their guest, right? You go on How Long Gone podcast and you check out some of their guests on the show, um, on their pod especially, and you'll see loads of like media figures or like writers and stuff. But people that essentially would get you loads of press in papers and in publications, which may explain why they seem to be getting all this flipping crazy, crazy PR everywhere. And then, of course, they recently signed to CAA which I think is absolutely amazing. And I think they're going to, I think there's a, I think there's meant to be some sort of a TV production deal happening, right? And let me just quickly check it here. I think there's a deadline article that basically speaks about it. But as a fan, I love what they're doing and I appreciate it. And I'm a fan of it. And I was going to go to a live show in London, but I just got lazy and didn't go. And, you know, I'm not going to buy podcast merch because it's not my thing, but I just love what they do, everything about it. And again, like I said, CB is an acquired taste and, you know, Dem Jeans, um, Jason Stewart is also somebody I'm a big fan of. But I just feel like the, 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 the kind of the press is getting a little bit nauseating. and it feels like they're shoving it down our throats a little bit. And with it being, like I said, with it being a niche thing, interest-wise, I just don't believe the press matches the actual reach of the show. Like, they're making it seem as if, like, this is, like, you know, the, the, I don't know, Joe Rogan for, like, millennials or something. And I just don't think that is the case. I know it's popular. I know it's got a flipping reach. But I don't think it's influencing culture as much as they're making it seem as. But obviously, you know, perception and narratives and stuff are really important. But this article is really cool in it regardless. It says, how long gone is 500 episodes, cancer, uh, culture, sorry, podcast signs with CAA, um, eyes, TV and film opportunities, which is pretty cool. Um, it says here, exclusive, the podcast, which is closing in on 500 episodes, um, having launched in the nascent stages of the pandemic, has signed with CAA. The move will also see um, the agency explore ex opportunities for uh, television and film, publishing for the pair who are currently talking, sorry, taking the show on the road with live shows in London. The full circle on the pair um, who have often joked about the podcast, about the desire to move into television and secure a list present representation. You could easily imagine a how long gone interview television series given the pair's controversial style, appealing to hipsters around the country and internationally. Um, early interviews included the likes of Jeremy O, Harris, and Whitney Paul, Jake Lacey, Lily Analock, Leonard Dunham, and they are followed up with the likes of Brett Easton Ellis and BJ Novak. By the way, Leonard Dunham, who I'm not usually a fan of, came across really well in this interview. If you haven't checked it out, definitely check it out. She came across really well, and I'm and I'm really a staunch Leonard Dunham hater, but she came across really nice. Um, Black previous sorry, Black previously managed a pop punk band cartel before becoming a fashion consultant for the likes of Tom Brown as well as a cultural writer. While Stewart, who often goes by the name Dem Jeans, previously played the likes of Steve Aoki and his noted foodie. Since launching the podcast in March 2020, they have released a How Long Gone um, album on Jaguar Jaguar. I'm um, sorry, uh, Jack Jack Jaguar, whatever it's called, and indie label and performed live in a number of cities, including New York. Stewart lives in Glendale, California, and Black is resident of New York and Hollywood. Imagine that. From podcasting, this, this guy's got two cribs, bruv, smashing it. With much of their content, um, which comes for out three times a week, revolves around the hot restaurant openings in LA, prescription drug preferences, and sync opportunities for musicians. As independent creators in the audio space looking for expand our reach, we can rest easy knowing that the gaggle of deal makers at CAA are watching us nightly and we've um, 
and we look forward to bringing our talents to the Century City, said Black and Stewart. So clearly an awesome opportunity for them going forward, but it does kind of show you just how the industry actually works, isn't it? Because again, I listen to it all the time religiously, but I don't think, from what I've seen online and conversation pieces and, you know, you don't see these guys clipped in certain places, whatever it may be, I just don't think the press matches how actually successful it is. But because of the guests they get on and most of them being journalists, most of them being writers, most of them being people within the somewhat what do you call them the media glitterati it kind of helps to sort of spread the message about what they're doing far and wide and make it seem like it's way bigger than what it actually is so this might be the actual the the, the way you have to do it nowadays the joe rogan approach of doing it beforehand just putting out loads of stuff and hoping that it kind of blows up is different it's kind of gone by the by for the most part now if you really want to go the extra mile and kind of pop mainstream you interview somebody that's controversial um you maybe interview people that got a lot of reach themselves and you hope that you can maybe tap into that kind of you know their kind of market it's kind of like what youtubers have been doing for ages where you sort of like try and collab with people who have bigger audiences or maybe a, an audience different to yours so you can maybe reach different people blah de, blah 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 but definitely check out how long gone if you haven't already it's definitely one of my favorite podcasts and i listen to it all the time